because I don't judge, I try not to judge anyone that lives any different than me, okay? I don't judge anyone that's gay. I'm not gay myself, but I saw Zac Efron shirtless in Baywatch, and I was like, huh. <laughs> Maybe this is how it starts. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't judge. But my favorite as a kid was always David and Goliath, because, you know, a little boy beats a giant. That's awesome. And looking back, that teaches a great lesson to kids, which is if your opponent is stronger than you, shoot them in the head. <laughs> From a safe distance when they were not expecting it. Was that a fair fight, David, or a murder? I'm not sure. Not sure you can be the underdog if you're doing drive-bys. What'd you learn on that one, Joey? I learned that ranged weapons always defeat melee. <laughs> Good. Didn't realize just how culturally Italian I was being from Staten Island until I moved to California <laughs> and I met actual white people. <laughs> from places like Utah <laughs> and whatever the fuck Wyoming is. It was the first time in my life I saw a group of people and I was like, am I white? Have you ever been like driving to work, being a responsible, mature adult? You see that cyclist on the side of the road? I wonder if I just like, mm. Like, not kill him, just like scare him a little bit. <laughs> share the road, share the ditch, buddy. There's plenty of road. Down. <laughs> I don't like the cyclists. I don't like their attitude. You know, these people were going green or saving the environment. <laughs> I was like, no, you got two DUIs, okay? <laughs> this is Birmingham, Alabama. If you're on a bike at midnight, you're an alcoholic, all right? I had a big birthday last year. Um... Uh, I am born in October, Scorpio, and people have bad, people have bad impressions of Scorpios. They say things like Scorpios are full of revenge and jealousy. They've been saying that to me since I was seven. <laughs> They're like, you're wild in the sack. You're like, am I? and then you just grow into it, you know? <laughs> but I'm tired of horoscope prejudice. I am tired of it. And one thing you can do is you can write, I wrote down an evil historical figure for all of the other 11 star signs. <laughs> so then when they give me guff, I can be like, oh, and you're, you're a Capricorn? Those are good. Uh, Kim Jong-un is a Capricorn. <laughs> so that's a good one. Good for you, way better than me. <laughs> What's your uh, horoscope, sir? Gemini. Gemini, right on. Let me see what we got here. <laughs> Gemini, ever heard of Jeffrey Dahmer? <laughs> Watch out for this guy. <laughs> How about you, sir? What's your star sign? Aries. Kim Jong-un's dad. <laughs> and Logan Paul. Ouch. That hurts. That one stings. Anybody feel like you have a perfect horoscope? Yeah. I see a hand over here. Leo, known for seeking attention. <laughs> nice. First hand up, just like Hermione and Charms. Uh, Mussolini. Roman Polanski, watch out for her. 
<laughs> I saw another hand right behind her. Oh, yeah, both. Both the Leos. <laughs> Not one other hand in the room. <laughs> That's beautiful. Horoscopes, they're so real, right? They're kind of true if you, like, think about it. <laughs> something to it. Yeah, it's because people have been telling them they want attention since they're five years old. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess I do. We'll do one more. One more. Okay, how about you, sir? Aquarius. Aquarius? Rare, one in 12. Very rare. Jeff Epstein. So. Watch out for that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't feel old, but I did recently identify a bird, and that doesn't seem good. Is that a whippoorwill? <laughs> why do I care? And why do I have binoculars? I got into bird watching over the pandemic, went down to Central Park. At first I did it ironically. I was like, I'm so alone. <laughs> Two hours later, I'm like, Martha, look at that owl. <laughs> Gorgeous. She's like, that's a rob, and I'm like, I'm new. <laughs> new kid on the block. But that is gorgeous. And I actually met a professional bird watcher. He gives birding tours, and I said, that sounds like a fun job. And he goes, well, you get a lot of egos. <laughs> In bird watching? And he explained that people will brag about how many birds they've identified in their career. And the best part is how they verify they've seen a bird is they just say that they did. <laughs> so I've seen every bird, prove I haven't. All 10,000. Oh yeah, where'd you see the cinnamon-breasted toady tyrant? Asheville. They only live in Tasmania. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> I was like, weird, here? <laughs> Check. <laughs> but if you ever meet an arrogant birder, you could actually have more fun if you went too low with your number. If they're bragging, just be like, I I've only seen two. Well, you've seen more than two birds. I wish. <laughs> yeah, it's just been pigeons and crows for me. It's super bad at it. How long have you been bird watching? Four years. I don't know if I'm looking in the wrong places or what. I've seen. Chicken nuggets, but that doesn't count. <laughs> I know. I like what Pete is doing. They're trying to remove animal violence from figures of speech. They want us to stop saying kill two birds with one stone, and they want us to replace it with feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> and that's so sweet. And I could almost see it meaning sort of the same thing. And I want all of us to implement it immediately. <laughs> the next chance you have, no explanation. Hey, while you're grabbing gas, could you grab some milk as well? Feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just grab some milk with the gas, would you? <laughs> 
two birds, one scum. <clears throat> but birds, a lot of them are gluten intolerant. So if you feed two birds, one scone, you could kill two birds with one scone. Yeah. The violence remains. And I spend a lot of time in coffee shops. I know I didn't need to say that out loud to you, but I do. And scones will get rock hard about two hours after they were fresh. So you could even kill two birds with one scone, stone style as well. There's more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, pet a cat. More than one way to pet a cat, this way and that. Tail and back. Whiskers. You can kill a bunch of birds if you have one cat. Mm -hmm. You sure can. You sure can. I was just in uh, Arizona and somebody told me to go see the petroglyphs. I didn't know what those are. We get out there, there are these ancient rock drawings and there's a plaque that says, unfortunately, there's no way to translate what these mean today. However, this little squiggle might be a snake. And you're like, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and then they go, and this little circle might be a portal into another world. <laughs> Wow, you really took some liberties on that one. No way to translate, but you're gonna guess portal off of that. Okay. You're not gonna guess that they were drawing a circle or the sun? Portal, all right. And this lady, I didn't see her standing right behind me, and she goes, don't you wish we could take a time machine and ask them what they really meant? And I think that's why I don't love talking to strangers. Because <laughs> you have to be polite. You can't be honest and be like, actually, that would be a dumb reason to time travel. <laughs> Spend trillions of dollars on fuel. Hey, we're here from the future. Me and this lady, we were... <laughs> we were so curious about this rock doodle that you did on this rock. Is that a snake? We're from the future. Uh, I was trying to draw a worm. It's a worm. Good thing we time traveled, Martha. Well, we're gonna head back to our time machine. Right through this circle, he's like, whoa. Cool portal. <laughs> wow, wrong about the snake, right about the portal. Didn't see that coming, Platt. <laughs> Didn't see it coming. <laughs> Anytime time travel comes up, it's always a short walk to the baby Hitler paradox. <laughs> Some of you familiar? It's the ethical debate. The ethical debate. Would it be better to, if you time traveled back to the moment Hitler was a baby, would it be better to kill baby Hitler or let him live? Classic ethical paradox. What would you do, sir? <laughs> it's Hitler. You can save a lot of people. Kill the baby. Kill the baby. You, you're going to kill the baby? Kill the baby. Yeah, OK, that's fine. That's a fine answer. Now, you saved a lot of people. Uh, but it is a baby, and we do need to know how you would do it. <laughs> You're a time-traveling assassin. You gotta kill this baby. How do you do it? Think about a time machine, I'd get a seat further back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why you wouldn't want to field this question, sir. <laughs> He's requested to move back further into the crowd where we will still follow up on the, the question. No, it's cool. Uh, it's just a special. It's just a special. Uh, it's just my 
It's just my first ever one hour special. And yeah, so pretty much the fate of it rests on you now. <laughs> if you have a good answer, it's going to a big platform. If you don't answer, it's going to Quibi. Uh, what would you do? Sorry, what's the question? How would you kill a baby? Gosh, it's not that complicated. If I was the time traveling assassin, I don't think I would be able to kill a baby. And that's fine if you would kill a baby. I just don't think I would be able to. That's just me. But I do think I would panic and bring it back to the time machine, show up in the present. They're like, why do you have a baby? I'm like, it's Hitler. <laughs> Who's Hitler? I'm like, it worked. And now I just have baby Hitler. Is this why I never had kids? Was I meant to raise Hitler in the 21st century? I would try so hard to teach him to love, find out if it's nature or nurture once and for all. He grows up, goes off to art school. I'm like, I'm so proud of you, baby Hitler. I still call him that. He calls me, he's like, I fell in love. I'm like, that away, baby. <laughs> love wins. I guess it is nurture over nature. A couple years later, he's like, she dumped me for a rabbi, I hate Jews. I'm like, easy, hello. <laughs> Kanye was right, no boy. <laughs> that is not what we teach in the Zimmerman household. I'm actually not Jewish. A lot of people ask me if I'm Jewish because of my last name. Um, I'm not. And then that is something I would mention to Hitler just as a precaution. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't grow up with uh, any real religion. It, my, my grandparents were super Christian and my grandma, one of the first Christmases I can remember, she gave me one of the illustrated Bibles, all the greatest hits, you know the ones. Adam and Eve, the origin story of food shaming. <laughs> I know when I eat apples, I'll smother them in peanut butter and honey. <laughs> and afterwards, sometimes I'm like, I need to put clothes on. That <laughs> was bad. <laughs> that was naughty. <laughs> I don't deserve happiness. But my favorite as a kid was always David and Goliath because, you know, a little boy beats a giant. That's awesome. And looking back, that teaches a great lesson to kids, which is if your opponent is stronger than you, shoot them in the head. <laughs> From a safe distance when they were not expecting it. Was that a fair fight, David, or a murder? I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure you can be the underdog if you're doing drive-bys. <laughs> What'd you learn on that one, Joey? I learned that ranged weapons always defeat melee. <laughs> Good. I want to be an ally to women. I want to be like I want a, a, a feminist, right? I want to be an ally to women, right? I want to be. We we just got married, but we've been living together for like five years now. So like you learn things when you live with a woman, like all that equality shit we hear about. That's not what women want at all. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, that that was news to me. Women don't want equality. What do you? Maybe in the fucking sixties, but that shit ran its course. That the girls my age don't want to vote. I'm like, babe, you're gonna vote? She's like, for what? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> they want the double standards to go their way, and they want you to just shut the fuck up and take it. Just, just, just tell us that. I want to, you know, don't mask it as something else. Just be honest. Like, I want to be Hitler. Just tell me that. So we can work on that, you know? Like, everything you could say in the 50s that was so horrible, women are openly saying it now about us, and no one gives a shit. 
No one cares. Back in the 50s, it's like, shut the fuck up, honey. Men are talking. And it's like, oh, God, I agree. That's fucking disgusting, right? You put on the view, it's like, men, shut the fuck up. Women are talking. And I'm like, yes, yes, they are. I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is going to work because this isn't really how equality works, but okay. Back in the day, you don't, don't ever speak for women. Men would speak for women. You know, like, don't ever speak for a woman. It's like, yeah, I totally fucking agree. Of course. Yes, it's a human being. Don't ever speak for somebody else. Then I go to a barbecue. Hey, Eric, you want a hot dog? He ate already. He's full. <laughs> You're full. To so go, okay, I don't know how the fuck this is equality, but all right. I hear that shit on the news, social media, equality. I'm like, I'm, I'm down for equality, equality. I'm like, equality, equality, equality. <laughs> you move in with a woman, it's like, e we're equals, right? Yeah, can I pick out the color of the couch for the living room? Fuck you, that's my house. <laughs> okay, equality though, right? I, I gotta love equality, right? <laughs> Try to have an opinion on what color the backsplash will be in your kitchen. <laughs> See how fucking equal you are, okay? <laughs> It's horse shit. It's, 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 I get dragged to Home Goods every goddamn weekend. I'm not allowed to buy anything. <laughs> I get my hand slapped away from the cart like I'm in fucking Toys R Us in 1999. <laughs> no, uh, put that back. We're not getting that. We don't need that. We don't, we don't need that. I'm like, batteries for the remote? Yeah, we do need these. That's why I came here. <laughs> you want to talk about what we don't need? How about that fucking barn door you're buying? <laughs> that someone turned into a mirror. We fucking need that for what? In case old McDonald comes over one night and needs something to snort cocaine off of? That's what... I don't know who Joanna Gaines is, but I'm gonna fucking kill that bitch. I am gonna kill that bitch. There's gonna be a whole other massacre in Waco. It's gonna look nothing like the other one. I'm turning into Will Smith. I'm like, keep that bitch Gaines out this fucking house! If I gotta hear another fucking word about shiplap, I'm, I'm just gonna kill myself. Because I know, look, some of you probably have great taste. Some of you probably do, but not all of you do, okay? And your house just like, it looks like a fucking cookie cutter, first grade classroom. Everything's labeled now. Every girl my age loves to label shit. Oh, this is butter. This is butter. In case you couldn't tell by it being butter, this is butter. Wall. Plate. What, do I have a fucking spelling test in the morning? What are we doing here? <laughs> oh my God, babe, that was brilliant. Writing eat above the refrigerator? <laughs> I was gonna take a shit next to the dishwasher. I thought, <laughs> I thought this was the bathroom. But now I know that's where we eat. <laughs> Double standard horse shit. Imagine if that was your husband's idea. Imagine if that was your husband's idea. You build your dream home, you're designing it. He's like, babe, listen to this. <laughs> then I got a great fucking idea for the kitchen. <laughs> you know where we eat? Stay with me, babe. Stay with me. <laughs> I wanted to say, eat. <laughs> Pretty fucking good, right? <laughs> Would she entertain that? Would she be like, I'm sorry, he's usually at work. He's usually at work. <laughs> Equality. Yeah, I know. We got a fucking man cave. That's our consolation prize. What? Well, he gets the man cave. I have five floors of whatever the fuck I want. He gets a man cave. It's like, oh yeah, thanks. Thanks, babe. I get to watch the playoffs with the fucking water damage and the mold downstairs. <laughs> you must really love me. I get to breathe in all this fucking asbestos. You must. I wonder why you live 10 years longer than me. <laughs> Maybe it's all the fucking mold from the walls. It's insane, bro. There's nothing you can do about it. No one's gonna change. No one's like, oh my God, I'm the problem. Who the fuck says that? No one. <laughs> I'm very lucky. I have a very good one. I really believe that I found like, I, I found like the right woman. We worked on ourselves for each other. I think it's like a, a great thing. You gotta have a good, a good backbone, especially in this industry. Like it was, it was hard for me. Like it was tough in the beginning of my career. Cause like she's, uh, she's right there with me. If it wasn't for her, I would not be standing here. That's a fact. And like when I was like doing comedy in the beginning, I'd be in some shitty, city with like seven people in the crowd. I'd call her on the phone. She'd be like, I know, babe, I, I know, but I'm, I'm tired. I gotta go to sleep. 
and I'd be like, okay, okay, yeah, just, just hold on, hold on. Why don't you talk dirty to me? And she'd be like, no, stop. You always want me to say things I don't want to say. Time out. Here's what she means by that, okay? When you're a younger, you know, 20, 21, 22, what turns you on is the normal dirty shit, right? Spit on my dick, the, the usual stuff, right? <laughs> Gargle my tits, the good old fashioned, you know the usual shit, right? The stuff your grandma would say. So, oh yeah, cause she was a saint. Uh, but like, you know, I was, you know, I, I'm 32 now, so like what turns me on now, I guess there's a little, made sure uncomfortable. Like I'm desensitized. I need something a little bit dirtier, right? So she'd be like, you always want me to say things I don't want to say. And I'm like, wait a minute, babe, babe. This isn't real, okay, please. You, you, you're playing the character, okay? This isn't real, no one can hear you. I, I really need this. She's like, fine, but this is the last time I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. You know what I like. Fine. My family gets together way too often. I'm like, oh my god, that's so. Holy shit. Oh, I fucking love when you talk like that. Holy shit. What about your uncle's birthday party? What about it? What about your uncle's fucking birthday party? You don't have to come to his birthday. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. How many fucking Saturdays do these goddamn people want? I can see if it was like a surprise 50th or a 60th, but the drive all the way to New Jersey for a fucking 47th birthday party is just, okay, you're disgusting. Am I done yet? Please, wait, wait, I'm almost there, I'm almost there, I'm almost done. No, stop, I don't wanna say that one. Please, I'm almost done. Fine, my mother's a bitch. <laughs> just being real, okay? Ladies, just, one, just once in a while, break that out, okay? I'm just saying. They will, he will stay with you forever. Don't listen to your friends. I know a lot of you have kids now. You're trying to spice up the sex life. It gets a little boring. I'm t just don't listen to your friends or fucking Vogue at the dentist article. Don't, don't listen to that shit. I'm telling you from a guy, okay? Don't, don't try to be sex like, want me to suck your dick? He's going to be like, ugh, it's fucking... <laughs> On your anniversary, you just be like... You want to skip my cousin's destination wedding? He's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. oh, fuck, I love you. God damn, I love you. No, I want to spend $5,000 to eat chicken fingers in Mexico. That's what I want to do. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot, I'm learning a lot living with a woman. I'm trying to, you know, I'm learning a lot. And like, like I said, I want to be a great husband. I want to be a, a good ally. I don't want to be an asshole guy that oppresses women in any way. Absolutely not. I just want to learn, you know, I should have paid more attention to my mom and my sister because I'm, I'm a little worried about her. Like, I don't know if I should go to the doctor or something. Do, do all women shed this much hair? <laughs> Is she okay? Because every day after the shower, it's like, who the fuck put a Furby in the bathtub? I don't know what, <laughs> are you okay? Living with a woman is basically like living with a German shepherd if, <laughs> That German Shepherd was a barber and never swept up after a long day of cutting hair. <laughs> everywhere. Her hair is fucking everywhere. And it's always all over me in the strangest places. And she never understands what I'm doing. Everything she does is perfectly fine. That's her catchphrase. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. She never fucking understands anything. <laughs> she loves to say, I don't understand for everything except for, I don't understand. I'll give you an example. I'll be watching TV in the living room. She comes out of the bedroom, she's like, I don't understand, why is the TV so loud? And I'm like, you don't understand? That I like the volume louder than you like? You can't comprehend what's happening right now? But then we go to a taco truck where some sweet little Mexican man starts speaking Spanish to her, the perfect opportunity for, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> But instead, because she's 25% Puerto Rican, she's just like, hola. <laughs> Como estas? Mucho bien, I I'm just like, babe, you can't fucking speak Spanish. You're embarrassing me, please. You can't. Yes, I am. <laughs> she's, like, she's, I mean, she's telling, like, you know, like, so, you, you, just think, you think living with a woman is going to be so much cooler when you're younger, you know? You need to walk home. 
Open the door. She's standing there like in some slutty lingerie outfit, right? <laughs> Welcome home, baby. I made your favorite. Elio's pizza. <laughs> now please play Grand Theft Auto for six hours while I suck your dick. I thought that's what <laughs> living with a woman was gonna be like. But in reality, I'm like, babe, I'm home. She's like, I don't understand. Why is there cocky stains all over the toilet bowl? <laughs> what is wrong with your cocky? <laughs> Every day I'm cleaning your cocky. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with mine. It's, it's brown. Is yours clear? I don't know where the cocky is. I'm sorry. I did the double flush. It's still there. We're going to stay there all day. <laughs> when the fuck do you shit, by the way? When do you shit? <laughs> I, don't I, don't I don't understand. I don't understand. She's telling me, I don't understand what's wrong with your cocky. I don't understand how it's physically possible for one of these hairs to come off your head, walk around my apartment, and find its way inside my asshole. <laughs> That's what I don't understand, ladies. Why is your hair inside my asshole? That's what I don't understand. How did your hair get inside of my asshole every day, by the way? Always in the asshole. I'm finding them wrapped around the head of my dick in the shower like he's trying to kill himself. I'm like, there's reasons to live, buddy. Every day I'm like one of those fucking magicians with the colorful rags. I'm like, for my next trick. It's wild. I just, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. Spanking, tried spanking, was not good at that either. Too tentative with the spanking, by all accounts. My wife said that I spanked like I was reassuring a nervous racehorse. <laughs> we shouldn't have done the spank. I regret the spanking. We shouldn't have done it. We're too deep into the relationship to be spanking each other. My advice, right, you're going to spank each other, do it within the first six months of getting together. Don't let ten years of resentment build up. <laughs> before you bring that into the equation. I was spanked with a closed fist one evening. Does that sound right to you? I spanked on the jaw and both eye sockets. Is that, I don't think that sounds right to me. I saw a sign at the gorilla cage. There's a tension, no kids in the gorilla cage. Because, you know what I'm talking about? A couple years ago, that kid got in there and then they, then they shot the gorilla. Yeah, they shot the gorilla. The gorilla, what? <laughs> Listen, the gorilla was at work. <laughs> It was Tuesday afternoon at 1.30. He was clocked in. He was where he was supposed to be. He just comes out every day to... <laughs> Mine and his business. And then, a, and then a kid got in the cage and they shot him. How would you feel if you're just <laughs> sitting in your cubicle, just... <laughs> just typing away at the office. <laughs> And a Bengal tiger walked in and they shot you. <laughs> this is where I was supposed to be. I like what PETA's doing. They're trying to remove animal violence from figures of speech. They want us to stop saying kill two birds with one stone and they want us to replace it with feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> and that's so sweet. And I could almost see it meaning sort of the same thing. And I want all of us to implement it immediately. <laughs> the next chance you have, no explanation. Hey, while you're grabbing gas, could you grab some milk as well? Feed two birds with one scone. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just grab some milk with the gas, would you? <laughs> two birds, one scone. <clears throat> But birds, a lot of them are gluten intolerant, so if you feed two birds one scone, you could kill two birds with one scone. <laughs> yeah. First of all, find out what a millennial is before you start bashing them, okay? Because I got my friends who are 33, 34 years old being like, yeah, bro, these fucking millennials are pussies. I'm like, you're a millennial!
We were introduced to it like very slowly and responsibly. You know what I mean? It was a little bit here, a little bit there. Not all the way at once. You know, like we were eight years old. We knew how to like code, like little fucking Zuckerbergs. We knew how to code in the back end of an AOL profile. We didn't just like choose the color black. We had to write hashtag F that, 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 to get black. Remember that shit? You had to know how to speak algorithm, okay? Eight years old, speaking algorithm. We knew how to, and then we go, we go back outside, have a normal childhood, but we know a little algorithm with us, you know? <laughs> you grow up a little bit more, the internet evolved a little bit more, we grew up a little bit more. You'd stay up late where everybody else was sleeping in your house, you'd go down in the basement to where that one computer was. We only had one computer, remember that shit? <laughs> that one weird computer that just, the light was never off. <laughs> it was like mesmerizing, like, what's going on? On the computer downstairs. 10 years old, you sneak into a chat room. You stay up late, everyone's sleeping. You're like, hey. Any other lesbians in this chat room tonight? Just one horny lesbian looking for another dirty 25-year-old lesbian to talk about lesbian stuff. I go to school the next day, my friend Joe's like, I talked to a lesbian for three <laughs> hours last night. I was like, me too. <laughs> me too, Joe. <laughs> we, were we were primed and ready. When Facebook came our way, we were, we were, we were ready for this shit. We were responsible with this bomb. We knew how to handle this shit. You know what I mean? It's like we read the first nine books. We're ready for the 10th book. We know the rules of this universe. We know the characters. We know how to behave. You know, we knew what a poke on Facebook meant. <laughs> we knew it. We, nobody had to explain it to us. We just knew. Eric, you saw Stephanie poked you? Yeah, Stephanie wants some dick. That's what Stephanie wants. I know she poked me. We gotta fuck. That, that, those are the rules of a Facebook I don't make the rules, but I know the rules, right? We're responsible with this shit. Your parents didn't read any of the first nine books. They don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, on the 10th book, they kick the door and like, what is this, Facebooks? This is Facebooks, right? Show me my old high school crush. I wanna see if he's bald. Make me, make me a Facebooks. How do I Facebooks? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're moving shit around. Nothing makes sense anymore. It was a cool place for a few years. It was like where we went to flirt, meet girls, meet guys, you know? And all of a sudden, it was like seeing your mom at the club. It's like, why the fuck is my mom on Facebook? Why is my mom on Facebook? So you shouldn't be here. This is worlds colliding. This is no good. It was where we did our thing. You weren't the same person on Facebook as you were at the fucking Thanksgiving dinner table. That wasn't you. You were fucking, you were just some alternate character of who you really want to be on Facebook, taking all cool pictures and shit like this. You know, that wasn't really you. Your parents shouldn't have seen that. It's, it's like seeing your parents, fuck, this is like, this is weird. This is not, you know what I mean? Like you used to log on to Facebook, it was exciting. You used to see like the notification, the five would light up. It's like, holy shit, what the fuck's behind that five? <laughs> you get butterflies, it was, it was, it was an exciting time. Was I tagged in a photo over the weekend? You know, did my crush accept my friend request? What the fuck's behind that five? Now one day you log in, it's like 99 plus. You're like, hmm, that's strange. <laughs> Did I go viral? But no, your Aunt Louise wants to play Farmville because she, she doesn't have a job, I guess. <laughs> Don't you work, Louise? I can't send you money and be jeweled right now. <laughs> what did you do to this place? <laughs> Nothing made sense. You're getting poked by your grandma. Great grandma, now I gotta fuck you, you happy? <laughs> you think I wanna do this? Those are the rules of Facebook, now we gotta fuck, okay? I told you to read the manual, lady. Why are you here? No one, no one taught us that a wall post was a wall post and a status was a status. We just knew that shit. They were two very different things. A status is where all the horny girls my age in college would make like a, a rap lyric when they were going out curling their hair. Like, did you put the sexy rap lyric there? Put it on, I put it on, I put it on. <laughs> curling their hair. Something about popping that pussy or something like that, right? So all the guys your age would like the pussy status. 
oh my God, he liked my status. We're totally gonna fuck tonight. It was a way to like flirt. A status was like a basically like showing your eggs, bringing them to market, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden on the pussy post, your aunt, your, your aunt Diane's like, happy birthday, Danielle. It's like, this doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't go here. That's a wall post. This is pussy time, okay? Fuck. Get off Facebook. We had a boy since we had him. We started keeping a, keeping across world affairs, keeping keeping kind of tabs on politics and what's happening in the world. Because we want to know what kind of world we've brought our little boy into. And I've looked into some stuff. And listen, I've got to tell you, Putin, not my cup of tea. <laughs> I do not like that guy's vibe at all. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm sorry to use this language. I'm going to use the word toxic. <laughs> no, we've got to call it out, lads, when we see it. Actually, and. We've got to stop him. We've got to stop Putin. I really believe this. I saw a graphic, right? It showed a map of the UK. It showed that if Putin dropped a bomb on London, that the blast would reach up as far as the Midlands, where we live. <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, fuck. <laughs> We've got to do something. Because I am not taking in Cockney refugees. I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. I have this relationship with my bank. First of all, they called me the other day. They got, John, we've had some uncharacteristic activity in your account. I was like, what happened? They're like, apparently somebody transferred some money to savings. <laughs> I was like, true, but hurtful, okay? 